Well, good Monday morning to you. Looking like a nice day out there. And uh, had a great weekend. Hope you guys did too. We are in Proverbs 6. So we're going to cover a variety of topics here this morning. So let's get started. Proverbs 6. My child, if you put up security for a friend's debt or agree to, to uh, guarantee the debt of a stranger, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said, follow my advice and save yourself, for you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now swallow your pride, go and beg to have your name erased. Don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you do it. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. What are, what are worthless and wicked people like? They are constant liars, signaling their de uh, descent with a wink of an eye, a nudge of the foot or a wiggle of their fingers. Their perverted hearts plot evil, and they constantly stir up trouble. But they will be destroyed suddenly, broken in an instant beyond all hope of healing. There are six things the Lord hates, no seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. My son, obey your father's commands and don't neglect your mother's instruction. Keep their words always in your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, their counsel will lead you. When you sleep, they will protect you. When you wake up, they will advise you. For their command is a lamp and their instruction a light. Their corrective discipline is the way of life. It will keep you from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of a promiscuous woman. Don't lust for her beauty. Don't let her coy glances seduce you. For a prostitute will bring you to poverty, but sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life. Can a man scoop a flame into his lap and not have his clothes catch on fire? Can he walk on hot coals and not blister his feet? So it is with the man who sleeps with another man's wife. He who embraces her will not go unpunished. Excuses might be found for a thief who steals because he is starving. But if he is caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole, even if he has to sell everything in his house. But the man who commits adultery is an utter fool, for he destroys himself. He will be wounded and disgraced. His shame will never be erased, for the woman's jealous husband will be furious, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation, nor be satisfied by a payoff of any size. <clears throat> so, covering a variety of topics this morning, uh, and that's what um, Solomon does. It's almost like he just sits down and starts writing whatever comes to to his mind and um, and just writes down these little snippets of wisdom. So we're just going to kind of be covering things over and over and over again. And so today's topics, uh, he starts off with uh, actually um, finances and putting yourself in position of the person uh, providing collateral. So he's saying don't uh, put up security for, for a friend's debt. Don't put up the collateral uh, for a friend or guarantee a stranger's debt. Uh, you're putting yourself at their mercy, uh, and you're putting yourself in a bad position. Um, and so he's saying get out of that situation as quickly as you can. 
And so that's just a, a good, um, I guess a good rule of advice is to be careful how you get involved with others and finances and what kind of situations you put yourself in. Today, uh, for the most part, things are so so uh, legally covered uh, with lawyers and papers and uh, it's just amazing the paperwork and stuff that a person has to sign when they're taking out a loan and such. But uh, but for those of us who are not going with that kind of, a, you know, lawyers and stuff, be careful. Uh, we want to be generous, we want to be kind, but we also need wisdom. Uh, so be careful uh, with your money. Um, then he goes to work. And it's interesting that Solomon uses one of the smallest smallest animals or insects, I guess you would say, on the face of the earth. He looks at the ants. He says, look at the ants and uh, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. It is interesting. Uh, ants have no prince or no governor or ruler to make them work. Ants just know they have to work. Um, they know they have to collect things in the summertime so they can survive in the winter. It's just in their instincts. It's the way God made them. And so they work. Uh, <clears throat> but then he, how long will you sleep? How long will you, when will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber. Uh, these verses have always been a little convicting to me because I like to sleep in in the morning. Um, uh, my ant work gets done late at night. <laughs> I work uh, 10, 11 o'clock at night doing things, but I've always liked to sleep in, so these verses have always been a little troubling for me. Um, but so far, we've been able to balance that and work, and poverty has not pounced on me like a bandit. And uh, scarcity has not attacked us like a robber. So, but it's it's basically it's not. Yeah, some of us are wired f uh, more for the evenings. Some of us are wired for the mornings. But the thing is, we are. Um, we need to be wired to work, and need to be wired to take care of business and and our families and our own uh, situation. So. Um, yeah, it's the scriptures talk a lot about work and laziness and who should eat and who shouldn't and we'll continue to get through those as we work our way through Proverbs. But the basic lesson today is is work and uh, get stuff done. Ants don't have to be told what to do and we shouldn't have to be told that we need to work to provide for our families. So uh, pretty basic there. Uh, Worthless and wicked people again. Uh, I think we've mentioned those the other day. Excuse me. Uh, we, they're constant liars uh, signaling their deceit with just the wink of an eye or a nudge of a foot or a wiggle of a finger. Uh, they're just they have perverted plots of evil. That's just where their hearts are. They're constantly stirring up trouble, it says. Um, there's just something in them that they just can't help but do wrong or do bad it's uh, and but then he says suddenly suddenly they'll be destroyed broken in an instant it will come quickly um, they won't realize uh, I think they would get warnings from God they'll get warnings from people around them we have laws we have common sense we have um, so they know they know but it'll be a, suddenly they will be taken down. Um, so again, this we need to be aware of the reality that there are wicked people out there, and uh, they are out there to take advantage of us. So we need to be aware of that. Um, there are six things the Lord hates; no seven things He detests. So haughty eyes or arrogant eyes, pride. Uh, you're prideful, um, a lying tongue, um, he doesn't like liars, uh, hands that kill the innocent, so again, murderer, um, a heart that plots evil, that person who, who again, just is constantly looking uh, for evil, for the wrong things, to, to do bad, um, feet that race to do what was wrong. You just can't wait to go in the wrong direction. You find a thrill 
whether it's in thievery or, or, or beating people up or, I don't know, you just, there's a thrill in just being the bad guy. Um, a false witness who pours out lies. Um, somebody who just, again, will testify but be a liar. Uh, not tell the truth about people. And a person who sows discord in a family. Someone who's always stirring things up, always causing problems. Uh, if you'll notice, basically all of these have to do with relationships. And a person who is constantly hurting, wrecking, um, just messing up relationships is the person that these are the things that God doesn't like. God designed us for relationship. He designed us for community. He designed us for each other. And the person who's constantly dividing that is working, working for Satan. It was pride. Satan was one of God's angels uh, created by God. And Satan decided he wanted to be equal to God out of pride. He thought he was equal to or better than. And it was pride that caused um, Satan to fall and since then Satan is doing his best to keep all of us uh, bickering and fighting and divided and, and even against God one another but against God and so this person uh, Satan knows if he can stir up um, the groups stir up the family stir up the church stir up the nation, if he can keep us divided and fighting against each other, he's defeating God's purpose of relationship. Uh, we talked yesterday about reconciliation. Um, this is the exact opposite. Um, it's just a problem, and that's what Satan is about, is causing problems. So beware of that and your role in, in how you're in your relationships. Uh, my son, obey your father's commands. Don't neglect your mother's instructions. Keep their words always in your heart. Uh, keep, um, I know, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I heard my dad, but I didn't listen. Or I listened and I didn't hear, whichever way you want to do it. I knew what my dad was telling me, but I didn't want to hear it. And so I tried to ignore it. But uh, a lot of his stuff comes back to me today. Uh, now, years later, as I'm hopefully getting older and wiser, and uh, I could have saved myself a lot of trouble if I would have actually listened uh, to mom and dad's uh, words back then. Uh, but when will they? When will these words be good for you? Well, when you walk, uh, they're going to lead you in counsel. When you sleep, uh, they will protect you, and when you wake up, they will advise you. So. Our parents' instructions were, in theory, as Solomon's assuming, should be coming from godly instruction. And those things, then, will guide us in all of our life. The wisdom that we can get from our parents, the godly wisdom, will guide us and lead us in all of our lives. So, um, their, their command is a lamp, their instruction is a light, their corrective discipline is the way to life. It's there for our benefit. It's the way God designed the family to work. Is to um, that family unit is where we learn um, discipline, where we learn to take instructions, where we learn to work together, where we learn relationship and community. And so, we would do well to heed the warning of our parents who are giving us godly advice. And then finally, he uh, comes back to. Uh, the immoral woman, uh, listening to our parents' advice will help us against the immoral, immoral woman uh, from the smooth tongue of the promiscuous woman. Don't lust for her beauty. Don't let her coy glances seduce you. For a prostitute will bring you to poverty, but sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life. Um, the rest of this goes on, you know. Uh, it talks about, can you pick up fire and drop it on your clothes and not catch your clothes on fire or can you walk on hot coals and not burn your feet um, <clears throat> Solomon's saying when you put yourself in this position uh, you're getting close to the fire and you're going to get burned and so 
you're not going to go and punish. Uh, he's, it, even if a thief was stealing because he was hungry, uh, if the thief gets caught, he's got a good excuse. He's hungry or he's trying to feed his family, but he's still going to have to pay back. He says up to seven times what he stole. But a man who commits adultery is an utter fool because uh, he destroys himself. And the husband, he says, is going to be furious and will show no mercy and will take revenge. Uh, he will not accept compensation or be satisfied with any type of payoff. Um, in Le in uh, Leviticus 20, verse 10, where God is laying out the law, he says those who commit adultery um, should die. And if you remember uh, Jesus, the story of Jesus, he's sitting there one day and the, this group of men throw this woman at Jesus' feet. And they say, we caught her in the midst of adultery. What do you say we should do to her? And they all had rocks in their hands because they knew she was supposed to be stoned. But the law says both parties in the adultery are to be stoned. And so Jesus forgave that woman and told those who hadn't sinned to throw the first stone and the men walked away. They knew they were trying to catch Jesus in a trap and he had, he had pointed out their, the errors of their way. And Jesus was coming with grace and forgiveness for this woman. But the Old Testament law made it very clear that if you were caught in adultery, both parties were to be stoned and killed. Um, God set up some pretty strict boundaries for us in our sexuality that, again, like we talked about last week, our current culture has just kind of just blown away and really doesn't care to pay attention to. And look where we find ourselves now. Um, this, the, the mess we are sexually as a, as a people, as a creation, as a nation. Um, this is what happens when we don't heed God's laws. And he, he didn't set up laws and boundaries to rob us of our fun and our joy. He set up boundaries and, and laws to protect us and really to protect us from ourselves. And because uh, we are these, we can be these wicked and evil people. Uh, we can be the ones who are always looking for bad because bad is what's fun. Um, you know, just think back to when you were a kid. You're out there running around on the weekends. Uh, you're looking for the action. You're looking for the party. You're looking for where the keggers at, or you're looking for that place you can get along with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You're not sitting home playing board games. That's boring. That's not any fun. You know, we just, the little things like that just, it just shows us our, our human nature. And so that's why, the, that's why these words of Solomon are so important. And that's why we're going to keep reading them. And he's just going to keep repeating, oftentimes repeating the same things over and over because we don't get it the first time we hear it and the second time. So he's just going to keep letting us letting us hear it. So that's it for Proverbs 6. And so let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you again uh, for the instruction of Solomon, who is thought to be the wisest man who's ever lived. And so would we not get bored with hearing what Solomon is teaching us or forget uh, when we get up from the couch and, and get on with our day, but would we take these words with us? Help us to be wise in our financial situations. Help us to listen to those. Many of us sitting here uh, don't have our parents anymore to listen to, but help us to listen to wise words. Uh, the wise words of our Father, you, through this book. Uh, help us to listen and to put into practice. And Help us to be the one who builds relationships, the ones who look for reconciliation, the ones who work to bring others together. Keep us building your family and your church, and then give us wisdom as we interact with the opposite sex. Give us wisdom to 
to not treat each other like extracurricular activities or or just something that we do for fun but help us to understand the the importance and the significance and the um, the role that you gave sexuality in our lives so God there's a lot here to think about there's a lot to take with us today so stir in our hearts put it in our hearts so it will guide us and lead us and keep us on the path the right path today in Jesus name amen all right good to see everybody today Elaine and Sherry and Bill hope you guys all have a great day and then whoever's jumping on later today hope God is uh guiding and leading you today and that you're listening. So remember, today is a day for something good, so be on the lookout. See you later. Bye-bye.